and welcome to the Town Outdoor Show. I'm Charlie. I'm JD. And I'm Grant. And I'm Fred. There's Fred. JD, I almost wore that shirt today. Glad I looked you did. at it and I went, yeah, he wears that shirt more I on think, Fridays than any I other think day. JD's going to wear I, that plaid shirt. Me. So I got the same color, Yeah. different pattern. Well, I actually wore that shirt yesterday. Okay. Well, I sent my scout. Or not off. that shirt, the a clean version that my, from my house shirt. The same oh, color. Okay. So if people don't wonder what we're talking about. We sell these shirts in the store, uh-huh. and so this is our our go to uniform um, <laughs> on most days because it's got our logo on it. So we run around the store wearing wearing these uh, game guard shirts, and they are without a doubt the most comfortable button up shirt I've ever owned, hands yeah, down. Yeah. Well, and you, now that you, you have a the uniform shirt. You can write it off. Like, like if you clean it, you can write it. Or you can write that off on your taxes. You get my get my wife a check for washing my. Washing my clothes. You should. Yeah. Pay her, give her a check. I'm going to go home and start a new uh, Donna Dry Cleaners LLC and <laughs> start writing her. But then but then she'd have to pay taxes on the income. So yeah. it, it's all a wash. Well, literally, <laughs> figuratively. It'd be, it ain't it'd dry clean, it's wash. Clean, wash. For a reasonable fee, I'll set that up for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but then I have to pay the accountant more money than we would save in a year. That's all right, as long as I get paid. Yeah, you get paid, the accountant gets paid. In the it's end, a great deal for one of you. Yeah. In the end, you look back and go, oh, did I really come out ahead? I, I, now i got more books to keep up with, more headache, more everything else. And uh, so, I don't know about y'all, but I, I'm been pretty nervous this week. You have been what nervous? What are they having? A, yeah, that list of I'm, Epstein people's coming out. And, you make sure that island was, you flew to wasn't? I'm a little worried about it. Well. I mean, I was in the back of the plane. <laughs> they couldn't not, see you under the seat. You wasn't, the head wasn't sticking up above the seat. I have. I was going incognito. But, okay. You know, I'm just saying. Yeah. It makes the line of that song more poignant now. It's, uh, <laughs> The uh, government needs to take care of minors, not just minors on an island somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually caught a lobster off of that island once. Really? Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't catch crabs it? off I don't even know what it Golly. <laughs> he set that he one went right on, He went right on there, just right, <laughs> right straight to that thing. <laughs> I don't know if you meant to set that up or not. <clears throat> well, no, but that was good that one. one out of park yeah, right there. That, that, that's a low-hanging fruit, fruit cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> you got to watch coconut. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Oh, boy. Where, where is that down in the in, in the Caribbean? I take yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's just off of St. Thomas, um, where we have stayed multiple times in St. John. You can see that island um, off of. It's Gibney Beach is the name of the beach, and uh, <laughs> it is. <laughs> and uh, and I've actually I got in a dinghy and rode over there right off that island and caught me a lobster. Yeah. Yeah, big old lobster. Big old spiny. Uh-huh. Fred, there's too many jokes in there. Uh, <laughs> He's Don't just, go there. Must, he's, he's, must you mess know with what? That Fred. he's wanting to I, talk about the dinghy. Huh? I hope they. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I I don't I don't hold out any hope that they will do anything to anybody over any of that, but I hope that they would because you know that's just that's, it, that's, that whole thing is terrible. Just weird. I mean, it just. I mean, I've seen that. I, I was on the the tarmac, saw his plane, Epstein plane, down there when he was. All that was going on. And they all thought he was like this business tycoon and all this stuff. At least the folks around the airport did, the locals. They didn't realize he was a human trafficker. They didn't realize he had a bunch Man, of... Man, that guy's got a lot of nieces he's bringing in yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Is that Michael Jackson bringing in all this? Yeah, yeah did you see Michael Jackson on there? He was on the list. <sighs> I didn't look at it. I, that's disgusting. I mean, I thought Michael was more of the Macaulay Culkin type. I, uh Man, that this just goes to show you the uh, the depravity of uh, humanity. I think is a very very strong testament to uh, <laughs> the leadership of this country and the depravity thereof. It is just yeah. And, I mean, of and, course, Clinton's like, oh no, I've never, I never did nothing there. I wasn't on that airplane. <laughs> you, well, is the name like fifty times on that? Uh, apparently, he was a big customer. Yeah. Well, if you was married, to and Hillary, you know, I mean, and you know that, and you know that Epstein was doing probably more. It was more of a spying and uh, extortion and whatever else from you know world leaders. Yeah, he, he was, but he was a freak in his own right. I don't want. It. 
And imagine the power you have when you have those kinds of people, and you have something that you can, you can hold, hold over, over them, yeah, yeah. hold over their head. That's that's yeah. my point. That's yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. And, and you know, there's some videotapes somewhere of all. Oh, this. you can you can bet every room in that place was multi-view oh, camera yeah. completely. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I, I bet you know. Of course, it could have been destroyed somewhere along the way, but I bet you that 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 has existed, um, and it just. Mm-hmm. The rich and the powerful. Sometimes yeah, but it, it's, yeah. It's, 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 well, you know, Jis Lane is here. Yeah, she's in Tallahassee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, she's out there. Prison. Prison. Apparently, she's teaching etiquette classes out there. That's what I hear. Mm. <laughs> She'd tell you which kind of fork to use. Mm. Wow. What kind of spoon? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Stop! Stop! <laughs> stop! I, I know where you're going. <laughs> It just keeps teeing them up. Uh, I'm not swinging at that well, one apparently, again. Apparently somebody taught Epstein how to make rope out of toilet paper. Yeah, I barely. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty handy skill set in, in and of itself. Yeah, you can make, right. make heavy enough rope to hang yourself out of toilet paper. You ever you, looked at the bottom of your receipts I, here? I, 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 it, it was actually about three weeks ago, and I had a receipt from here from something I'd bought. and I'm looking at the receipt, and it – it says Epstein did not kill himself on the bottom of the receipt. <laughs> that's like, been on there for years. Yeah, Ever put, since we, he killed himself, yeah. that's been on the bottom we, of the receipt. We put that on there right after it happened. And everybody that's <laughs> bought anything here has carried that out of here. And I'm looking at that. And, and nobody like, ever says anything. Did they do that just because of me? or No, it's, <laughs> it's been on there for years. And, 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 I mean, you have to be completely – you have to live with your head completely buried in the sand up to your waist. It's called the rectal cranial inversion. Yeah, to not understand that mm-hmm. there is no there is no way that that guy suicided himself when he's on suicide watch. Yeah. And two of the cameras that were supposedly focused on his room magically quit working on the same night at the same time. And his cellmate, and, who and was it, supposed to be in there, magically disappeared. Yeah, there, there's so many coincidences that that it, it's just becomes completely yeah. not plausible that it that it was an accident or a suicide you or whatever. Got better you, odds of winning the lottery. Way better odds of getting struck by lightning twice in the same week and winning the lottery. Yeah, I mean it's just infinitesimal numbers of uh, the, the odds are just infinitesimal that and. People will go, oh, yeah, he was a bad guy. He killed himself. Oh, yeah. He was so distraught. No, that guy, I guarantee you that guy's not distraught. That guy was working an angle on figuring out, yeah, I ain't going to be in here long because I got enough stuff on enough people. I'm going to get out of here and go on back yeah, to you, doing my you, business. You know, you know he was going – he had enough yeah. to cut a deal. <clears throat> he, anyway. Did you – the judge in the case, when they wrote it up after his – he got, what, a year in jail or some, some yeah, small little nothing. Yeah, but he didn't even do it in jail. He did it on he work was, release in his office. Yeah, he was doing it on show up at the show up at the office every day and check in yeah. kind of thing in Manhattan. And they wrote in there that no future co-conspirators can be charged in the in the final dissertation of his sentence how that's even how binding, do you do that Fred? I, you don't i mean you you're think, a lawyer <laughs> yeah and if i took that in front of a judge they would get your you know what i mean there is no yeah i so, mean everybody right, so, had, so you go i'm gonna i'm gonna plead armed robbery kidnapping and attempted murder uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plea. And just give me a year now. Now, but but I want you to sign an agreement when I plea that you can't charge all the other people that were there with <laughs> the buddy me. that drove yeah. the car. All and the picked other me people who, the guy yeah, fenced, all the accomplices, the guy it to, and the, uh, the the person who actually pulled the trigger. You can't they, charge them because I'm gonna take this. Plea. It's that's not, not even not a the legally binding agreement. I mean, not in Florida, but law, a judge but, signed it in I, New York. Well, I mean, <laughs> have you seen some of these judges in New York? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. what that clown up there New doing the New York City. <laughs> the one doing the the civil trial with Trump that keeps grinning at the camera and he's got he looks like he's like, on he's a sitcom or something. Yeah, yeah, it's like you know, hi, hi, hi. I mean, he's got the, this. I mean, come on. Yeah, uh, it's so. I, I mean, am so glad I don't practice law up there. I mean, I, I can't imagine some I mean, of, some of the places. I would have no hair. I mean, none whatsoever. <laughs> it's already taken away most of it practicing here. <laughs> what happened to your head? Uh. uh so I was putting up Christmas decorations, and now I look like freaking Mikhail Gorbachev, and I'm running around trying to tear down walls. And he got sketchy. It, it won't heal. I don't know what. I didn't. I should have. We'll be half. back in a minute with more. <laughs> Talking about 
Yeah, checking the time. Talking. Well, you, you, when you took your watch off and propped it up like that, me and Fred was both thinking the same thing. He's timing something, and which led to Baptist it, preachers. No, if I was timing, I was going. I would do it on the phone, not on my watch, because that's one of those. It's analog. It just goes round and round. I don't actually yeah, look at it. But you got a bezel it, thing there. You can. I don't know how to use all that. It's like a diving watch. I don't even swim, so I mean, you know, uh, ain't a diver. Yeah. You don't dive. It's a, I thought you were a diver. That's me. Oh, you don't. Tell the story about Miss Matey. So I went to church. He, he, he was talking. Fred was talking about his father-in-law being a Baptist preacher and uh, taking his watch off and setting it up there so he knew how long to preach. Well, my, in the church I grew up in, in First Baptist Church of Chattahoochee, Florida, Miss Matey Clark sat on the back row. She was about four foot nine, four foot ten, maybe with her with her Sunday go to meeting shoes on, and she lived right across the street from the church. I mean, like. Right across the street, right on church on one corner, Miss Métis' house on the on she the other. She probably corner. knew everybody's coming in for marriage counseling and yeah. everything too. And uh, probably <laughs> now Baptists don't do that. She, knew, she knew all the gossip. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but uh she sat on the back row of the church, and buddy, at twelve o'clock, straight up and down, when it got to be noon, noon o'clock, oh, yeah. Miss Métis, whether the preacher was, don't matter what was going on in the church, you could have been having the. The greatest sermon on Miss Métis going to get up and turn around and walk out to church, and that was kind of like his timer. He didn't need a watch. But the preacher did. and my grandma asked her one time, said, "Métis, why'd you get up and leave church the other day?" And she said, "I got a roast. I, I cook a roast every Sunday, and it's got to come out of the oven oh, at twelve oh five or whatever." <laughs> she had time to get across the street and turn the oven off so that roast didn't dry out. Oh yeah, <laughs> she, and then, and she had a great excuse. Yeah. Well, we're supposed to be done at noon, and so I, oh, yeah. I time my day around it, and if you ain't done, I'm going to get up and leave. I'm going to get up and go. You know how long you got? <laughs> if you want to see a Baptist cuss, then you, you take church past noon <laughs> on Sunday. Well, the Lord's chicken is getting cold at that yeah, point. That, so. Yeah. So, yeah, when, when I was growing, we went to – it was Episcopal Church, it's Anglican now, because we split off because Episcopals got weird. Yeah. But the uh, – It's true. Yeah. Well, it did. I mean, there's all kind of strange stuff going on. That, but – so – we got out before the Baptist, and, it, and we didn't hang out in the courtyard after church because we had to beat the Baptist to Moby Dick's to eat the eat the buffet in Bradfordville. Oh yeah, there was a, right up there. I was going to say right up at Thomasville and Bannerman, and yeah, right in that area. I about there. cried when they shut that place down. I mean, I don't remember ever eating there. I remember driving by and remember where it said. I think it's right there where Target, so, sort of in that little area. Oh, where they had Target a Sunday. Is. Yeah, that's where it was. I mean, they had a Sunday buffet. And then they had a little holding pond out there where you, they actually had some catfish in that thing. That where they caught you, caught you buffet catfish for Caught you buffet catfish out there. <laughs> some, some people have a lobster tank. Some people have a catfish, catfish pond. pond. That's what they had. <laughs> I've eaten at a couple of restaurants that had a had a pond out back, and they, you know, they go out there and you get it fresh because it yep. was just flopping was, around. And my brother caught an alligator farm, farm put it in there. Yeah, my brother caught an alligator, put it in there, and that did away with the catfish. So they had to start buying them. And that's why they're out of business. Yep, right there. He probably did it. Cost them. Cost them. <laughs> yeah, that was back in the day when Bradfordville was a trek from oh, Tallahassee. Man. It was way outside of town. See that? And I, I grew up there. Yeah. And uh, this this might have been why I got into the law because I figured out you didn't have to have a driver's license to drive a tractor mm-hmm. on the highway. That's correct. So I could go. Got to have one of them triangles on the back. Yep, as long as you had a triangle on the back. And so I'd drive, you know, I'm 10 years old. I'd take the tractor up to Rayburg's Grocery to go get sundries. <laughs> just driving over, holding up traffic on Thomasville Road. Just, <laughs> yeah. Probably Thomasville was probably two lane back then. It was two lane back then. <laughs> yeah. You could cut through Veldadary. It was dirt. Yeah. Back then. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a. It was actually rural. I mean, really. oh, I've talked to people with. Yeah, I used to hunt right there where, where oh, you yeah. live, or I used to hunt right over there off of, you know, back where there's huge neighborhoods now. And you know, trying to explain to somebody that Killarney Lakes, where I live, is bigger by a lot. I oh, mean, yeah. way more people live in Killarney Lakes than lived in the town I grew up in. It's, I mean, exponentially. Killarney Lakes is huge. Yeah, it's like thirty thousand people, I think, live in the subdivision. Of in there. And uh but it was a uh, it was Bull Heedley's mm-hmm. uh, hunting property. Sure. Uh back Lo- in back Luna in the plantation in that area. Yep. It was all yeah. Bull Heedley's hunting property, but in uh he uh I tell you, I, I I dig in my yard all the time planting stuff, whatever else and I th- there must have been a pile of Native American, bunch of pile of Indians lived around oh, they did. Uh, Lake Ammonia because I can't dig in my yard without digging up 
pottery and um, was doing something, planting some stuff for my wife here a while back, and I hit something with a shovel and looked down there, and it was a sterling silver spoon. Really? Now, tell me how that got in the yard. Well, apparently you know, somebody was born with a silver spoon in their mouth that, on your my, property. Well, you know, it, right there on the lake, my my thought was, and, and I looked this spoon up, and it was manufactured. It had the, still had the, the maker and all that. It was manufactured like in the 1920s. Is, they is have the records company. of spoon manufacturers in. 19- well, you can look up biz, the, the the company that made it and see when they were in business, and okay. then you can look up patterns and see what certain patterns time frame were made on the the, uh, the designs on I, the. Sp- I would not have thought to do that. Would you? <clears throat> I'm weird, Fred. I'm a nerd. I can't well, help it. Well, he you got to understand. JD is used to doing that with guns. I mean, you show yeah. him an old gun. And if he doesn't already know everything about it, within a minute or two, he he's going to go look yeah. it up, and he's going to tell you, well, these were produced between these years. Now, this one has this little cartouche on it, and this, and that, and other, and this. And is then a, it's and not and gonna... There was only so many of these. May, and throw him, a, throw him a silver spoon. You need to get with Larry Folsom. Larry, Larry, who is, uh, yeah. the, for the audience, Larry is a retired um, lieutenant with the sheriff's office, worked with us. He was on the SWAT team with me, and or Larry was a motor cop and all this stuff. His wife still works up there, I think. And, um, Larry retired. He's also a martial artist, a uh, competitive shooter, went through all this stuff. Mo- motorcycle always, restorer. Oh, my Lord. Man, he's done so much knife stuff. Knife maker. And- oh, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's, Larry, Larry was – he'd get on these – he'd go off on these tangents and he'd get really really good at something and I, I guess he'd lose interest and he'd go off on another tangent and get really really good at that and I, you know I'd, I'd love to have the skill set he has in any one of those areas and he could shoot yeah he didn't care about teaching it to nobody but he or he'd be out here working with us but he 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 can do all those things he now is a referee for MMA matches yeah and yeah. and you'll see him on TV yeah. huh. and uh, well. he looks like a Viking and uh, so now his thing <laughs> Is going around and digging up stuff in the woods. He likes to go in the woods and take pictures of snakes, which is why me and Larry don't hang out. Um, <laughs> and he'll go out in the swamp and just walk around, take pictures of water moccasins and stuff, and talk oh. about how pretty they are. And, nah. And uh, and you know he's do- he. And if you follow him on Facebook, he documents this. You know, like hey, there's this. I uh, don't. I don't like. I don't know where it's at. Down Lake Monster, somewhere down there where the, the whole swamp had dried up, and then he's watching the water flow into the swamp, and then documenting over two or three days. It's like the Nature Channel, hmm. and um, but he's that. been digging up a bunch of stuff down around the old air base, and yeah. tra- you know finding bottles mm-hmm. and Trash uh, like little They're- pill pill things and lipstick tubes, and he'll he'll post some stuff from now now and then. He'll post some stuff and go. Hey, what he picked up something that I I figured was a was a tooth off of an excavator from some of the construction back then. I said that looks like an old excavator tooth off the bucket. I, I think that's what it was. But uh, he posts this stuff from time to time, and you and him, y'all well, could go over his think, trove of stuff, yeah, and you just I'm be just amazed. Thinking, I, I'm sitting there thinking, how did this how did this spoon get buried in my yard from a hundred years ago? Yeah. Manufactured approximately a hundred years ago, and you just kind of start going what's the story with that and the only thing i could think of is that probably a hunting party they probably back in those days being gentlemen quail hunters and that kind of stuff yeah that would make they sense. probably had a field picnic right mm-hmm. out in the field somewhere and they decided to have it by the lake and i'm you know 100 yards from the, the bank of the lake there on the lake ammonia my house is or where it's at is a pretty good distance away from the lake where you ain't getting m- mosquito bit you know being that sure. close to the I mean, water that was quail area. and i'm kind of on a high little bit of a high you know up up so i'm i, I guess that my a, my brain was, goes through this whole old, thing one of those old horse-drawn wagons they had set up Correct. as a cook and they're they're going through there hey let's stop and have lunch and we're gonna cater and, we're gonna cater and bring your food down here and one of them said hey i'm gonna bury this spoon i'm gonna mess with a guy <laughs> somebody gonna, gonna find they're gonna it. build a house here one day and <laughs> yeah so but and that's exactly where my brain went and i'm sitting there and i formulated this entire probably what the day that that happened was like and it's just i hope you that, frame that spoon and put it above you man you know, no i don't I, I, it's, it's, i'll tell you what i do with it fred is in my it's in the silverware drawer where our regular daily flatware stuff is and that's what i mix my drinks with when i mix a drink at the house i use that spoon to stir my drinks with so i'm putting it to use so it's a 1920 <laughs> spoon <laughs> Uh, what are you drinking with it? Like bullet or <clears throat> uh, Jack and ginger, probably. Oh. You know. So you putting a a a, a, sil- a sterling silver spoon mixed with Jack and ginger? Yes, sir. Okay, makes the drink better. 
Yeah. Buffalo Trace and Ginger You need some lit like elf. No, I, I'm, I stay away from that clear stuff. That <laughs> <laughs> make me act crazy. But no, I was, mm-hmm. so I just, it's just neat to, to go back and think, and how did that possibly get there? And um, I actually have a, a, a unique pottery find in my yard when mm-hmm. we dug the pool. I don't know if I've told that story or not, but I sent pictures of this to the state archaeologist because I'd never seen a piece of pottery, and I've seen a lot of pottery. I've picked up a lot of pottery mm-hmm. in my life. And uh, this one's from the Swift Creek tribe. Really? The ones that built the mounds in Kolomoki and Blakely, Georgia. Yeah. And the, the archaeologist, state archaeologist, said, yeah, I, we, we always assumed that they traded with the, the Indians that lived here, oh, okay. down so just... here, but we've never been able to prove it because they had, apparently the Swift Creeks had wooden, carved wooden boards that they rolled the wet pot on top of to leave an imprint around the rim of the bowl and they handed those boards down through their family so if you knew enough about it or research enough they could tell you what clan or what family used that pattern and uh when we dug the pool in my backyard found that piece in the yard so it's i don't know what clan it was that just played that orange bowl but (coughs) it wasn't the clan i've been watching all week yeah so most of the warriors left (laughs) J- JD's digging his pool. He didn't tell you about the <clears throat> Native American skeletons and the uh, mound that he had to finish no. leveling before he. Uh, <laughs> no. And now he's got his watching his TV and it's got that <laughs> snow on it and it's talking yeah. to him. And, yeah. Poltergeist yeah. is getting after. Next thing you're going to suck his house up in the in the. Come on, Mister Johnson. We're digging your pool in the backyard. We found this. Shh. Throw the trash there. Don't tell nobody. Put it in that trash can right there. Go on. Shut up. Here's an extra hundred dollars. No. Be quiet. No. We'll be back in. They're back. the wiregrass segment well it's the bottom of the hour bottom of the hour it's for anybody that listens online or streams yeah, or okay. is in the well, do- we formerly known as, area formerly known as the wiregrass segment. Yeah. so when we when we opened our show in dothan we have five minutes at the bottom of the hour on terrestrial radio that we could either put ads in or we could um you know and if you listen to our dothan ads folks we we need advertisers so if you have a business out there that aligns with our values um somebody that we can support i mean i'm not going we're not going to advertise for some company we don't believe in we have to be behind you or else we don't want you know we're not going to put our reputation on the line for somebody that's contrary to our value system so but, if uh, but, you, like but if you're listening Peter. to the show, you probably are right along with us. But we have some affordable rates, uh, something to help us pay for the show, and we'd love to have you on board. We've got uh, some room on the quarter hours, the 15 and the 45s, <clears throat> in in the uh, and and 1039 broadcasts over a huge area. Yeah, it's a big station. I mean, it's 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 if you're if you're listening on one, it makes it down you, to Panama City. I think you can, I don't think it quite makes get it that close far. Down it, there. it gets down around. You can get it as far as like Bluntstown. I know. I mean, depending on how how a good antenna you have. But you know we're over in. Uh, well, Chip, if you live Chip, in Alford, Bonifay, chances, Mariana, if you live in Alford, way. chances are you're probably gonna have. If you want to listen to the radio, you might have a good radio antenna. You, <laughs> nah, I don't know. I got crappy ones on all my equipment, and I can get get most all this stuff. But but we go way north and way west, and so um, you know it's a big advertising area. If you're if you're interested, um, give us a shout at the range and tell Frank. You uh, are int- and we have packages too. Have packages where um, you can get a, a sign at the at the range. You can get a corporate membership. You can get radio advertising. This is what we've been doing for years with our clients in the Tallahassee area, and it's worked out well. Uh, our listening audience is growing constantly. We have the the organic audience that comes at 1039 in the area, and uh, then you know we've started getting more and more people following our show. Well, I got a good yeah. buddy listening right now in uh, <coughs> Miami. He don't he don't miss a show. He oh. down, he, you know, we even had a live studio audience last week. Yeah, if you count Sammy, I mean, 
Well, <laughs> I'll put Sammy in here and just sit him down at the mic. Let him tell stories Right, Reverend Sammy Dixon. There, I'm going to pull out my watch and put it on the podium. <laughs> or if, uh, I was teasing. I was like, man, you really do sound like a Southern Baptist preacher. He does, kind of. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That cadence, that, uh, <laughs> that voice cadence that. Well, he kind of has that air about him, too. Like, you know, let me tell you, you know, <laughs> let me just, uh, and of course when Sammy I, talks, I tend to listen. Yeah, absolutely. When he yeah. grows a garden, I tend to show up. <laughs> <laughs> he he was telling me about that uh, before before it actually happened. He, you know, that joker came in my garden and he was picking. He waited. He didn't even wait for it to get ripe. He come in and got it before it got ripe. And I was like, I didn't want him to get it. <laughs> I was like, Sammy, you know stuff will ripen after you pick it. You can leave it set around yeah. long enough. It'll get ripe. <laughs> It'll our, okay. uh, our, our gunsmith came in the other day and saw some of that fruit that you had picked at the Jefferson County Courthouse. He goes, hey, man, who brought these by here? And I said, well, Freddie, man, these things are good. And I said, well, take, I'd taken some home. He said, well, I'm, I'm going to take these. He went next door. Which, by the way, man, I saw something that Colt did the other day. Gunsmithing wise, yeah, uh, it was an old like an LC Smith. Oh, the uh, old shotgun, uh, double side by side, and and the old shotgun. And he said, "Well, it had a lot of sentimental value to the guy." And I said, "Well, I don't know it'd been worth you know fixing with it. the wood the, just the woodwork he did on that thing from what it was before." Yeah, you know, for the untrained eye like mine on that kind of wood, I wouldn't have known that he did that oh, work. I would have see seen me? the two spots at the bottom where he had to drill it out and put screws in there and then seal Plug it back it. up. But and it was one little hairline crack there that was really bad. But yeah, all that, of the, that wasn't the bad part. The yeah, bad, the bad part, part was all looked, the the bridge inside uh, on that one was. <clears> but it, it actually the the wooden bridge in there it, it actually just came out. He's done of, two guns for me. Uh, one of them was just he redid the wood. It's beautiful. Then he took my my dad's first Stevens, uh, four ten double barrel, and man, that thing, it had a little crack in. It. He, you can't see where the crack was. The work that he did is phenomenal. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and reasonably priced. I mean, it's and that's what people don't understand. Uh, we we've had some people come in and complain about the price and this that and the other. I'm like, you you're talking about. That shotgun that Charlie's talking about, oh yeah, he had like twelve hours tied up, twelve sixteen hours tied up in doing that. Didn't charge him for all of that, but turned out gorgeous. Oh yeah, we'll be right back. Puffed up, chomping at the bit. <laughs> no, no, no. That, well, JD story. was talking about that ghost that was living in his house. <laughs> well, not on the show, he wasn't. Oh, yeah. So he was trying pre- not to ruin pre- his property. Pre- preface all this with oh. my, my son when he was growing up as a teenager. He was convinced that there was a ghost in his room, which he li- had the one bedroom that was upstairs. And uh, he's like, Dad, there's a ghost. I, I, I saw it. I saw it. I'm like, yeah, sh- hush, son. Go back to bed. I don't believe in all that. But anyway, my sister in law comes up from Miami over Christmas and. She, she had brought her dog with her and the dog was up there and apparently the dog was looking into the corner in the middle of the night and started growling in the middle of the night and she's like there's a ghost or something up there and i'm like hmm, hmm. funny funny you should say that because anyway so my wife a few years back had this hairdresser that was a little loopy and uh <laughs> not only was she a hairdresser but she was also a some kind of feng shu you know that feng shui yeah that um Feng Feng Shu or whatever, mm-hmm. like a goddess or something like that, and then she, you you could hire her to go around and cleanse your office or your house of any ghost or paranormal oh, okay. activity. I don't know what that is. I, uh, I thought that Feng Shui. Mumbo Jumbo. I really. thought yeah. I thought Feng Shui was uh, how you arranged your That's furniture. That's what I thought, but apparently there's more to it than that. And, uh, <laughs> And so well, that had to do with ranging furniture and designing a house. Well, she kind of took a liking to my wife and wanted to give her something nice and, and agreed to come and cleanse my office. When, this when is I taking a there. turn. <laughs> <laughs> He done had the voodoo, <laughs> had the voodoo, the voodoo queen come up in there. <laughs> so at the time, my brother was renting the back office space from me. And uh, 
And so she shows up after my wife gave her the key to the office. And so she shows up. And she had to, had to do it when there's nobody there in the office. So he had to come there at night. And so she comes dressed up in because her. Because, of course, she did. Uh, <laughs> She's I'm, got. This is, this, I'm, go I'm, ahead. This is, a pl- this is the plot of something. I'm sitting there going, "Well, let me make make, make some notes." <laughs> so yeah, so she shows up complete feng shui attire with the the whole you know goddess dress and got her gong and she's going up and down the hall, banging the ghost out of the office with the gong. And so my brother was single at the time and. and <laughs> And so he comes in, the, he, he, for whatever reason, felt like he needed to be in the office in the middle of the night. I don't know if he had anybody with him or not, but he comes in the office, and he hears this banging and gonging going on in the office. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> this is a true story. I'm serious. And so they, she's banging the gong going down the hall, and he's coming around the corner. And as they round the corner, they come face to face at each other. He doesn't know what the hell he's seeing. <laughs> and she grabs that gong and bangs on it and says, Be gone, ghost! <laughs> and it's it's midnight, and I, you know, I'm at home. Right. <laughs> I get this phone call, and my brother's talking all kind of weird stuff, talking about some lady in a gong in an office, and I'm like... I know I didn't have that much to drink tonight. I mean, <laughs> not that much lit elf in, no. in the house. <laughs> I mean, I, I was like, who is that? You know what I mean? <laughs> but, oh, good so, Lord. So, yeah, moral story. I thought you were going to say he, he came around the corner and saw her, and the first thing out of his mouth was, how you doing, no, I mean, <laughs> Joey? <laughs> I don't think she was his type. I mean. <laughs> you never know, friend. Yeah, I'm I mean, just saying. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, it would be kind of weird. The know. fact that she thought. That he might have been a ghost is kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but you know, does he look that bad? <laughs> apparently, she said there was a ghost in the place, and she got rid of it. Well, um, he looked he looked like he was related fee? to you. He said something bad happened in my conference room, but <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I mean, we've had some shady people coming in and out of there. <laughs> you, <but>. you think? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I, I don't buy into all that stuff. And I, there's so many TV shows and stuff on now with these ghost hunters and the. Oh yeah. And, and it's just uh, that's kind of like the. And my wife picks on me because I am a huge uh, Oak Island, Oak Island mystery treasure hunt fan of that show, and it's yeah. been going on for you know the show's been going on for however many seasons now. And I, I you know, I about determined that the treasure is the, is the TV show. <laughs> yeah. Those guys are probably making a fortune on, but they, you know, every year they get, Oh, we found some more tunnels and we finally dug up some wood and, and I can't quit watching the darn show. <laughs> I can't, I have to Tuesday nights. I either have to watch it or record it. Cause I got to know, I got to know what they found. And I don't know. That's you the weirdest. Well, if get you would just re- record it and go to the last 10 minutes, you'd get a summary of the whole thing. You'd I know. Cause they, they, the and they or, or just wait till the next week and they replay the last week's that's show. Like watching the, the, the show where it's, you know, what on earth, you know, they, they zoom in from a satellite and they yeah. see something what on and earth? they go, what is this? And they tell you, they don't just tell you what it is. It would be good enough if they just said, okay, this is an abandoned thing that the Nazis had, and, da, 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 and this is what it is. That would be informative. Oh, no, no. They have to give you the 14 implausible things that it could be first. <laughs> yeah, it's like those and things then dispel all, And then yeah. dispel all of those. Well, this couldn't be true because well, really know, this is, expert is saying so. Bob's so. outhouse. <laughs> and then it's yeah. like, yeah, and <clears throat> all these, these patterns in the desert we found after you go to some, oh, well, the ancient Mayan and, and the aliens and the this and that. And they go, well, it turns out out in 1972 bob smith went out there with a tractor and a rope and he, he plowed circles and the thing and i'm like dude i just watched an hour of this crap and these stupid commercials with men kissing men and stuff about about pills you can take and all this crap just so i could get to wait a minute there's a pill old cousin bob plowed it up with a tractor Jeez, man, I can't believe I wasted my time. Oh, what's the next show? Bob was out oh, here lost a, his watch and what he channel are you watching where they got pills that make men kiss men well, no, it's just you, you put know, two saying, th- two different commercials together. I just oh, threw okay. a bunch of commercials was, right. into one. I was like, man, somebody needs to ban that pill. <laughs> There again, I don't care who does what to who. That's their business. But, man, I'm sitting there watching t- family TV, and all of a sudden, boom. And I'm like, ah, uh. 
Oh, yeah. Some, I don't want to see two ugly people kissing each other either. Don't get me wrong. I think just because it's men on men. I just don't want to see – I, I just take it all off. Just, a TV, off a of TV, not off. I'm going to please keep it on. I don't on. really like watching people kiss. I, mean, no, I don't no, care I don't what either. they do. I, 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 I mean, even that. when they – like in the movies and stuff, okay, let's have a love scene. Do it Just, just like, yeah, like allude to the fact, but – I don't. I, no, I, I don't I'm, need to see nobody slobbering all over my kids, somebody my else. My kids in here watching this movie, and they I don't mean, need to basic see that instinct. stuff. Okay, I, I'm, then, I'm good with that one. But you know, I have to pause <laughs> the TV because my kids in the kitchen doing something behind me, and I'm like, oh, I just, I, I, oh yeah, I'll it's, fast it's, forward I, to this. I, I, I live. I get the, the house. point. Those two people on TV had sex. That's all that matters. I just, right. Okay, they're together now. That's enough. Oh, Been it's, watching it's, uh, Reacher. Okay. Oh yeah, oh, Reacher, right. Reacher, and I'm and, liking and, me some Reacher. And, yes, sir. And well, those scenes are acceptable. You yeah, know? you know what happened. They didn't show a whole they, lot, yeah. and that's good. Yeah, that's that's fine. We know we know they got they they hooked up. Okay, yeah. well, that's all I need to know. They hooked up. That's they got bad, this thing going. A, it, yeah, we we would be that's watching a bad that dude stuff right there. <laughs> when, when I was when I when I was in law school dating my wife, we'd be watching you know movie with a grandmother from time to time. Mm-hmm. It was Scottsboro, Alabama. Something like that come on. She goes, all right, if it gets any worse, we're going to turn it off. <laughs> and then, of course, it gets worse. All right, if it gets any worse, we're going to turn it off. <laughs> Y'all go to your room. I mean, after a while, we're watching Pornhub. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if it gets any worse, it probably ain't going to get any worse. <laughs> Oh, mm-hmm. good lord! Yeah, Richard's a bad dude. I like, I like, I like his I, attitude. We're gonna, exactly we're gonna find him and kill him. Say. Yeah, we're, we're, when we find him, we're gonna kill him. So, oh yeah. yeah it, uh, did you see uh, the one the other night where he said, told him to get in the car. He said no. Yeah. And he said, why not? He said, because you didn't ask nicely. Yeah, I, I, I love that. I love his whole. Uh, he does such a great job yeah. portraying that, and he's a big enough dude and can fight well enough in the movie. You know, yeah. the, the, I suspect that dude you wouldn't want to. I don't know that I want to dance anyway. with him. No way. Yeah, uh, I'm with you. He's but a just the boy. attitude of like, no, no, you know? I don't think so. What are you gonna do? Kill me? <laughs> oh, I've read every one of the books. I mean, they. Yes, yeah. he does portray the guy in the book. Yeah, because he's a big old dude. You know. Yeah. Yeah, they make him out to be like six five or whatever in the book. That, yeah. The guy that plays him on TV, yeah, my, he's my wife looked up. He's six three two sixty or something oh, like yeah. that. Big old boy. Yeah, I'm when they, I'm six three two eighty. Yeah, they did the movie. And they, and they, yeah, but I ain't two built like in that. a different place. <laughs> I got it's all well, in I can a different tell you place. Where about forty of it is, <laughs> and it ain't where I want it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. <laughs> but we, yeah, that dude's that's a. I, like I said, I just I, I dig his whole demeanor and attitude as far as finding the bad guys he goes yeah we're, we're, we're gonna find them and kill them all right just hand, i don't That's care what right. happens after that we're gonna find them and kill them you know he don't need a watch either he always knows what time it is to the second oh yeah yeah he's huh? yeah that's his character huh. it's wow. in the book Hmm. Apparently I don't. Yeah, I don't know. What, I, I, that Charlie can't even read. My watch, watch is watch. never right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's never right anyway. I just wear it because just Looks to cool. have something on my wrist. We'll be right back. And we're back. We got a uh, got Paul Captain Paul Tire has called in, uh, or I don't know what to do. Yeah, I don't know what you do when you don't. You're not calling in. You're logging in. You, you, he's you know, he's in. calling he's in. Calling in. Whatever. He's on his phone, and we on we not. So he's calling in. I tell you what, when he answered the phone, he, he sounded a little bit excited. He was. <clears throat> I tell you what, guys, they are fighting today. Started off kind of slow this morning, trotting like it was the other day when we was out here, but they have rose off the bottom. Man, we're catching some two and a half, almost three pounders. It's been a blast. You yeah. catching crappy? Yes, catching crappy today. Any bass? Yes, bass didn't buy. And I had a bass trip yesterday. I had a young man, 11 year old, catch him a six pounder. He was so tickled, it was awesome. Hmm. There you have it. So, how's the how's the weather up there today? It's Friday, and it's this front's coming through. Is it a uh, little, little chilly on the water today? Yeah, it was a little chilly. There was some frost on the ground this morning, and it was dead calm out here. And then the, about nine o'clock, nine fifteen, that wind picked up, and it's steady increasing coming out of. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's some, some weather coming in for the weekend, but uh, yeah. How, how, uh, how deep of water are y'all fishing in? Well, today we're catching all the fish we're catching the men are in twenty five foot of water. Oh, okay. So you out, you out close to the some of the channels yeah, out we're there. Actually, in the river channel, I tell you, there's a the uh, Bass Nation has a high school tournament tomorrow, and there'll be about two hundred boats in that tournament with the high school kids and. 
and I think that weather's going to get out of here about 7 o'clock in the morning. Well, good deal. Good deal. So you got 200, 200 high school boats, 200 kids fishing, or 400 kids fishing. Is it two per boat? Yeah, so. yeah that's right. I think, you know, they've had uh, up to over 200 boats in these tournaments. And there's boats running around everywhere out here today. I didn't know you could find 400 high schoolers that would actually fish in a tournament. Oh man, bass fishing! Bass fishing is a big deal in high school right now, Fred. Believe yeah, it or not. I mean, I know Charles has a team. Yeah, they have a team, and in Georgia, it is a sanctioned Georgia high school sport, just like football and baseball. You can earn a letter uh, in bass fishing. Man, if that had you been get around, a letter in bass fishing, yes, sir. Can you get? There's five hundred colleges doing scholarships for fishing. I wonder if they're having the trans issue with the bass people. <laughs> <laughs> but can you yeah like fred said there's there's 500 colleges that are doing bass fishing scholarships really yeah you get so, paid to go to school to go catch fish for yes for your college how cool that, man if that had been around when i was a kid what? i wouldn't have gone to class no i mean why would you i got 57 hours so you got some el- you got some eligibility left paul is that what you're saying <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> hey, I do too. To come to think of it, I got I got four years eligibility left. Maybe I get me a uh, get me back to college. I mean, how do you get the scholarship? I mean, I, I don't get it. I mean, you, you fish these uh, these these state. There's like this tournament is run by the Florida Bass Federation Nation, and there's kids coming up from all over Florida and in uh, Georgia fishing this tournament, and then you qualify to to make the state classic, and you do well. There's college recruits just like in uh, football they go watch these kids and get opportunities but there's always an element of of like luck to fishing i mean not you can, you not, can, not not as much as you would think for the guys that are the, the tournament guys there's not as much luck right. there is some luck involved there's and you right. got to deal with the elements and stuff with the weather but there's there's a whole lot of whole lot of skill involved a whole different level of bass fishing than what you and i do is go out and hope they're biting and yeah. you know fish around somewhere there's a whole lot of strategy to it so i mean so i could like take pictures of myself maybe i could do that for the grandkids is just take some pictures of them catching brim and send it into the colleges and say here give them a scholarship i don't want to pay for this <laughs> <laughs> I could, that, that'd be a good idea you should promote that paul you get uh bring kids on there you'll take pictures of them catching college it's a good excuse yeah, yeah, anyway. I, 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 I have, I've, I've had the pleasure to work with some kids and help them develop and i've had kids that were going to get full rides and scholarship for different universities and it's, it's pretty incredible when you because a lot of them kids you don't find them getting in trouble in fishing too much Man. I wonder if the transfer por- portal uh, affects the tournament. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> performance. How that would affect that, <laughs> you have a but bass you know, fishing it, transfer. It, it used oh. to be in Florida and, and football that if you won, that counted for something. At least they haven't took that away from fishing. Yet. You ever catch the most and the five biggest ones win? Is it ain't who's got the prettiest bass boat yeah. at the end? Uh, yeah. You know who, who's got the best hair? Right. Yeah. Right. Or who's gonna? Uh, we got a lot of different. <laughs> yeah, so it's not like you have uh, like who looks best on ESPN gets the wins the tournament. Count. Yeah, I don't count in this game still. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, buddy. Well, we be- appreciate you being part of the show. Tell folks how they can get a hold of you. Man, and give me a call eight five zero two six four seven five three four. And I'd love to take you fishing the bass and the crappie are biting right now. And uh, I will see y'all next week at the. At the- all right, buddy. Well, y'all be careful out there. We'll see you. All right. Buddy. All, right. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> he apparently just caught one. Yeah, apparently, somebody got a good bite. <laughs> he gets so excited. I mean, he does. He gets so oh, yeah. excited when he's fishing that yeah. that somebody's catching something. He, you know what? <clears throat> and Paul's not in here, so I'm gonna talk about him. Um, he he is so passionate about what he does and just going out on a boat with him that one day you've been out there with your mom and man them. i taking my mom and my aunt and getting them on that shell cracker bed and them old girls just i, I mean they just had and, and he was just as excited every time they caught a fish as they were and they were just like they, you know these these ladies my mom's 80 my aunt mel's in her late 70s and they 
they were like it, it was really and i was I, all i was doing was taking fish off and and baiting the hook and paul too and it was all we could do to keep up with the two we, of them pulling chain crap. poles yeah with brim buster <laughs> well not cane poles they're yeah, brim, brim busters. Busters. yeah catching catching bedding big huge pound you know pound and a quarter shell cracker and uh and and, and i think they would have stayed there all day uh, they would have but when we got the the, the cooler full I said that's all I'm gonna clean today, <laughs> and uh, you know, and we caught fifty. We we put fifty one, fifty two fish. I think in in a forty eight or fifty quart cooler full to the top. That's how big these shells. I mean, the limit's a hundred a person on those. Yeah, so it's it, but fifty was plenty, and we put them up in the freezer, and every one of them has been eaten at this point. But uh, there ain't nothing better than a fried oh, shell man, cracker. You ain't joking. I mean, oh, it's just and these you know out of Spring Creek, so the water's clear, mm-hmm. and you're literally looking at the fish and dropping the dropping the bait over there in front of them and uh but uh, he was just so good with them and got and was just so excited every time they catch fish he, he just he loves it uh i love spending time with him on the water you got to experience that with cj oh, yeah uh, his, his attitude is just amazing and it's, it's like he's a, he lives on that lake yeah and goes out the canal from his house and goes on to the water and that's where he you know you know and I'm like well Paul we, I didn't know if you plan on be he's I'm, I just come right back out as soon as I dropped y'all off I mean this is what I do this is what I do I, I spend every day on this lake yeah and I'm like ah oh, man that's got and then to make a living doing it you know on yeah. top of that and get to share and you and you know you and I know this to to enjoy teaching and working and going and you know showing other people a good time. You know, we do it on a gun range. We've made a difference in a lot of people's lives, you know, with our skill set. But to watch, you know, but I mean, I, I mean, I like shooting. I just don't. I, I don't get the sheer enjoyment out of it that he gets out of fishing. Yeah. I mean, I, it, I, I, I would, I would live his life in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. Man. Well, I mean, it, you, you know, know, the other thing is usually if you, you can take a, a hobby or a passion or something you like to do. And if you start doing it for a living, a lot of times it will completely change your attitude about yeah. that. It will ruin it for a lot of people. And I know, speaking for myself, back in back when I used to fish bass tournaments, I used to I used to fish bass tournaments when I was younger. Not a lot, but I did fish bass tournaments, and it was so it became because of my competitive nature, and uh, you know it it became a job fishing a bass tournament because you've got to go out oh, yeah. and you practice and you you feel like you have to produce and if you don't do well in the tournament then it's it, it's just you know when i go out and what's well, frustrating is two or three days or whenever they would close the lake three days before before the tournament when your, your last day of fishing usually if i had fished it two or three days in a row i knew where the fish were i'd go out there and fish i get on the last you know the last practice day or whatever i go out there and i'm like all right and i know my plan i got my i'm set to go uh, fish this tournament and then show up three days later and you've had a cold front move through or you've had something change or whatever mm. and the fish aren't there anymore and you go oh what do i do now you know because it's going to take me two or three days to find them again and to get on them again and start catching them so yeah that's where your luck a little bit of your luck is involved sure. in that stuff but it became work and it wasn't fun anymore so yeah, i quit music doing it. music did the same thing when i was doing it you know four five nights a week it's work at that like, point. This, this is a job. Now that I'm doing it once or twice a month, it's fun. It's fun again. It's just like yeah. fishing for me is sure. completely fun again now. Whether I catch anything or not, I don't feel pressured. I don't feel pressure unless I got my kids with me, you know, yeah. and I want them to have a good time and catch fish. I don't really feel pressure about fishing anymore, uh, you know, when we're just going out for fun and don't care if I catch anything or not. Same with sitting in a deer stand. I don't care if I kill a deer most of the time, but you know, when you get in trying now, to put one in dug, the freezer, I'm gonna fight you over a dog. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Well, that's all the time we got. See y'all next week.